Hello all, I am Sai and you are watching The Book Dragon. Today I am bringing to you my first video podcast in which I am going to talk about the thoughts that I have on one of the recent books that I have read in the past month that is February and it is Deep Work by Can Newport. This has been a really different experience as well as a different book from the regular types of books which I read and it is a self-help book and non-fiction book. So I will be talking about some of the concepts which I learnt from the book and which I feel are very much useful for anyone who would uh, like to read that book. So without any further ado, let's get into the review right away. First, let's see about the two main concepts upon which the book rests and they are deep work and shallow work. First, let's see what deep work actually is. And deep work involves all the activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push a person's cognitive capabilities, that is, the capabilities of a person involving conscious intellectual activities to their limit. So, in order to differentiate deep work from shallow work, you can see some of these traits which are any skill or any work that creates value is deep work. The second one is that while you are performing an activity, if it increases a particular skill for you, then it shows that you are working deep and not just in a shallow manner. And last of all, it is really hard to replicate. It cannot be done by any other person in a really easy way like mundane tasks can be done. So it's always hard to replicate and these are the three main traits that you can consider in order to identify the work that you are doing is deep or shallow. Moving on to shallow work, non-cognitively demanding logical style tasks performed when distracted all come under shallow work and in order to differentiate shallow work and not interpreting wrongly as deep work you can look for these two traits which are shallow work doesn't create much new value it just adds on to the existing value for any task that is present and the next one is that it is very very easy to replicate it is some work which can be done by everyone in the same way without a lot of improvement and adding value to the thing that you're actually doing so in order to differentiate shallow work from deep work you should look for these two capabilities and the main thing which separates deep work from shallow work is that deep work cannot be replicated so easily but shallow work can easily be the author actually says that there are three kinds of people who can thrive in any kind of economy as a result of their deep work and these three kinds of people are the people who can work well as well as work creatively with machines the second type of people are those who are the best in what they do that is they are very highly skilled professionals and they don't have that many people whom they can go to and they are the go-to person for that particular acquired skill and at last we have people with capital that is people who have a lot of money like venture capitalists and such people like that who can just invest a lot of money in order to develop a brand or develop a company and make things huge. Even after talking about all these concepts, I am a person who always looks for some facts and scientific evidence in order to believe certain concepts like this one which are like not that easily believable and for that this author has written a biological evidence which is very very accurate and it is called the work of myelin. Now myelin is a kind of protein which coats the neurons or nerve cells that make up our spinal cord as well as our brain. The work of this protein called myelin is to cement the skills that are acquired during deep work strongly to the neurons that are attached with doing that particular skill or task. Now what happens is that while we are focusing intensely and deeply on any particular task, the neurons that are associated with our brain that are performing that task are repeatedly fired continuously. As a result of this firing, what happens is that the outer covering of these neurons need a lot more protection and in order for that protection we get the secretion of this myelin protein which starts encapsulating all these nerve cells as a result of which the cementing of the skills that are acquired while working deeply during these times are very stronger in those particular cells and they make us very much better in that particular task. Also remember this is possible only when a task is deeply worked on without any distractions whatsoever and it doesn't ever work when you are multitasking. The next concept which I found very interesting within this book is called the attention residue and I have experienced this a lot of times but I didn't know how to act on it very well. I am not going to say you the method by which you can overcome this issue because I want you to read the book and, and interpret it and do it in your own style and the concept of attention residue just says that while you are doing a task with deep focus and complete attention and shift your attention to a really minor task in hand to be done in the same time what happens is 
the attention that you are focusing on the second job is not complete as well as the attention that you had already given for the first job gets a bit decreased so as a result you are not able to give your full effort for either of the two tasks and it ends up not creating that much great value so it's always advisable to complete one task fully when you're working deep and then move on to other tasks the next concept which fascinated me the most is that willpower is finite willpower is finite for any kind of person you might have experienced this when you had a good day you might feel like you have all the potential to work and do all the things that you want to do on a particular day and you end up doing everything perfect in the first few hours of the day and as the day moves on you're not able to focus that much and you'll not be able to do as much work as you did in the earlier hours of the day this is mainly because of the fact that your willpower keeps on depleting itself once you focus and give most of your will to the tasks that are early in hand so drawing one's willpower in an unstructured manner depletes it from further usage then how can we control this wastage of willpower if it is so much necessary and it gets depleted in such an unstructured way for us the easiest way to structure and use our willpower in the perfect way is by creating routines and rituals because it helps spending our willpower in an organized and more efficient way and at the end of the day you will be able to complete all the ta tasks that you wanted to do and you'll be able to organize the amount of willpower that is required for doing each and every one of the tasks rather than just focusing all your willpower in the first task in hand and not being able to do all the other th tasks throughout the day now we'll see about the four disciplines that the author talks about in order to make the most out of the deep work that you have finally structured and putting into use in a daily basis discipline one focus on the wildly important deep work can be made to achieve in a clearer way by setting oneself a goal it can perk up enthusiasm the gist of this first discipline is to prioritize the stuff properly and focus on what is most important rather than all the meager things that don't require a lot of time and effort because what's wildly important will always bring up more value to the work that you're doing and it will eventually end up in adding value to the greater good. Discipline 2 Act on the lead measures There are usually two types of measures that are involved in any type of deep work. They are lag measures and lead measures. Now lag measures are the things you are ultimately trying to improve. That is the things that you are not that great in but you are using your deep work in order to increase your skill in that particular area. And the second one is the lead measures. The new behaviors that will drive success on the lag measures. Lag measures are kind of your liabilities and lead measures are the things that you are trying to make and improve in order to shun off those liabilities so you have to focus on both of these but act on the lead measures always because they'll automatically mitigate and lessen the lag measures discipline 3 keep a compelling scoreboard some visual representation must be maintained to keep track of progress and monitor lags when they occur this goes hand in hand with the second discipline which is to act on the lead measures in order to know what are the lead measures that you have to take in hand you'll have to know what are the lag measures that you are having and you are facing right now so always it's advisable to have a visual representation of your progress because it will easily show you the areas in which you are lagging and those areas which need more focus as lead measures in order to lessen those lags and make the value better in order to add to your end product the last that is the fourth discipline is the most difficult one to follow and it is to create a cadence of accountability. One should learn to hold oneself accountable for any positive or negative results which will result in self-realization and overall improvement. Now, once you're seeing the negative results, it's not a form of judgment that you're posing on yourself. It's just self-realization which is ultimately going to help you improve yourself with the help of others as well who are knowledgeable in that particular field and it is always advisable to hold yourself accountable to your actions because it always ends in self-realization which ultimately leads you to improvement as a whole. Next I'd like to talk about my most favorite part of all the concepts that the author has talked about in this book and it is called productive meditation. Now productive meditation is the process of mulling over new ideas when you're physically active but mentally not that active that is you're mentally latent for example the author had actually tells about thinking about new ideas and brainstorming stuff without a pen and paper while you are walking showering or doing any other non-mentally demanding task that is a part of a daily routine for example i'm a person who likes to walk for at least an hour or two every day and one of the main things that i do during that walking time is either listening to audiobooks or i just 
type and script out my videos on my mobile phone so that I can develop them later on. Also, have you noticed most of the times while you're in the shower, bathing for a longer time or while you're mostly on the toilet, you tend to get up certain ideas that are so new and some of those ideas can even make your life better in many many aspects. This is because you've been productively meditating in those times without your knowledge. The last concept that I'd like to talk about while finishing this video is looping because this is the only obstacle that you will face while productive meditation. During productive meditation, when the mind cannot arrive at a necessary solution for a problem, it keeps on jumping back to the first solution which was not at all fruitful and that's one of the main reasons you've been continuously thinking for the same solution again and again. But most of the times what the mind does is that it's not able to think of new solutions and it just forcefully jumps its consciousness to the solution which you had at first which was unfruitful. So in order to reduce this one what you should do is that it is necessary to be mindful of what is happening and gently guide the mind towards arriving at a new better solution which will eventually solve the problem. So yes guys that's all for today and if you did enjoy watching this video or listening to this video and if you'd like to get more of these video podcasts in the future do let me know down in the comments because I do have some ideas for future videos further on in this same category that is video podcasts and if you did enjoy watching it and found it helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends if you want to get more content from me do subscribe to the channel because I publish new videos every Sunday Tuesday Thursday and Saturday thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day